Good morning. It is the, no, it's the Feast of St. Andrew. It's November 30th. It's the third Wednesday in Advent. Um, we're gonna jump around a little bit today. We'll start with the gospel that is in today's readings, depending on what readings were chosen. But we're gonna start with Matthew chapter four, verse 18. So we'll go 18 to 21. But then if you wanna mark where we are, we're going to flip to um, John 1, 35 to 42. So let's begin with the Holy Spirit prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Beginning with Matthew. Matthew four eighteen. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, they saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Okay, so that sounds like the first meeting of St. Andrew with our Lord Jesus. John, um, the evangelist, uh, who was kind of a stickler for detail, has this rendition. Um, he, he begins with, um, with John and Andrew, so John the Evangelist and Andrew standing with John the Baptist. So the next day again, John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples and he looked as G at Jesus as he walked and said, behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what do you seek? And he said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. One of them, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. Okay, so let's stop here for a minute and look at this one. Um, Andrew meets Jesus at the 10th hour, which is about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, just before sunset, just before the Sabbath begins. And um, it, it kind of sounds like, these two meet him and they're a little bit starstruck and they just blurt out like, where are you staying? Instead of any of the other pleasantries that you might blurt out when you first meet someone. And Jesus goes to stay with them. But this is a big commitment because um, it is four o'clock before the Sabbath. So there's gonna be like about 26 hour um, period where they have to stay in place. They're going to stay together. Um, kind of hidden away from the world. So this initial meeting with Jesus is a full immersion meeting, right? They are gonna to be together for the next 26-ish hours. Um, so John and Andrew sign up, if you will, to rest with Jesus as the first thing that they do with Jesus. They're just going to, the Sabbath is a, is a time of imposed rest. Um, they're gonna, tuck themselves away from daily activity. They're going to stop doing the things of normal life and they're just going to be with him. They're going to begin their relationship with Jesus at rest with Jesus. Um, and so Andrew learns from the beginning to rest in him and with him. And 
what happens in secret and in the unseen is shaping his relationship going forward with Jesus. And I think that's true of us too. What happens when we allow ourselves to rest with Jesus, to be still with Jesus, to be quiet with Jesus, to be tucked away, um, that is going to shape our relationship with Jesus. The unseen spiritual things that happen in private are the things that determine the public actual things, right? So after he does this, he, he immediately runs out and brings Jesus to his brother, unites Jesus with Peter, who is going to become the rock, the foundation of the church. It is the, the strength that he gathers in the rest that allows him to go out and to proclaim the gospel right from the very beginning. Um, so the kingdom of God, right? We talk about the kingdom of God all the time. It's not a visible place. It's that place, that tucked away place where we rest with him. Um, and our hearts, when they're at rest with Jesus and unseen by the world, that's where God does his best work. And so we need to put ourselves in that place of rest. And we need to do it frequently and we need to do it regularly. We need to be at rest with him in the quiet, secret places so that our hearts can hear him and be revived in him. And then we can go out and preach and then we can go out and bring God to other people. Um, so that, that, that little piece right there, that place of rest. But then there's another thing. There's a humility about him. If you, when you talk about, when you read about this, you see, and looking at Matthew's version, you see that there are four men on the boats who are called to Jesus. There's um, Andrew and John and Peter and James, four men who are called to follow him, who drop their nets, who go become fishers of men. But later, um, at some very significant times in his life, Jesus chooses three. He chooses Peter and John and James to be, he invites them to be with him in Gethsemane. He invites them up to Mount Tabor to witness the transfiguration. And you have to think about St. Andrew, who does some pretty cool things. Like he's the guy who sees the kid with the loaves and the fishes, and he you know, gets that whole Eucharistic miracle, if you will, um, or precursor, if you will, um, in motion. He's very much a part of Jesus's ministry. He's very active. He's, he's very much a disciple, right? But he's not with those other three. And he's got to think, like, I introduce them to each other. Um, but he doesn't. He seems to be very humble. Um, and, and he doesn't put, like, I, I think if we were left out of that, th that threesome that got to go with Jesus, then our feelings might be hurt or our ego might be crushed. Um, but, but he doesn't do that. He sees that this is not about him. It's about Jesus and he keeps proclaiming the gospel and he keeps being a witness to Christ. Um, he also is a person who, he's not one of the disciples who shoo the children away. He's a person who brings people in. And, um, and I've always loved that about him. He's, he's definitely a, look what I found, come see it too, hurry, hurry. Um, <clears throat> The other thing that's interesting, and, and I don't even know how it ties in, but it's a, it's a very interesting little fact about St. Andrew. He was crucified in a, an X form. So his legs were akimbo, his arms were out like this. Um, and it, no matter how you hang there, crucifixion is death by asphyxiation. It's, um, you're in excruciating pain, but you don't die of the pain. You die because the, the weight of the way you're hanging makes it impossible to breathe and it's a slow death. So you fill your lungs a little bit, but not very much. And you keep going and going until you can't go anymore. Um, while he was dying, he was still preaching the gospel. So with every last little breath he had in him, he was telling people about the goodness of God. Every last breath. And that to me is just such an extraordinary witness to what we're called to be. We're called to be humble. 
We're called to be hidden. We're called to be at rest with him. And then we're called to give everything we can by the witness of our life, um, even in our pain, to tell people about who God is. All right, so prop your Bibles open, take your pick. You can choose um, the first chapter of John or the fourth chapter of Matthew. But think about St. Andrew, pray about St. Andrew, and don't forget that today is the day that those of us who pray that beautiful, beautiful St. Andrew Christmas prayer, today's the day to start. So get your prayer cards out, or if you have a reminder bracelet, get that out, whatever it takes, put a screensaver on your phone. Um, but today's the day. Begin your St. Andrew devotion. It's a beautiful, beautiful devotion that yields fruit. Um, even as you pray it. Um, <clears throat> while you might not see your intentions answered right away, lots of people do, um, the prayer itself changes you and prepares your heart in a very unique way for Christmas. So I highly encourage it. I'll see if I can find a screensaver that we can put up here and stories so you can have that. Um, but they're out there. Um, go to Novena Cards. I'm sure they have a good one. But, but do... I, if, if you've never prayed it before, um, find the St. Andrew devotion, the, the, the Christmas prayer, and start today. And join us in praying every day from now until Christmas. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.